Today I'm telling you about Princess Leia. So a few weeks ago, like more than a month ago, you've seen on our social media close up quick look of a black dress and then you never heard about it. And if you watched our fashion show at Japan Impact, you might have seen that we had the dress in the fashion show, Mezzo was wearing it. And then we had also the dress in Umia Venitas, but it was a different dress. Because we were not really happy at all by the sample that the first factory did us. And we had to redo the whole dress in less than a month. So, first this is the picture that we gave the first factories and also exact same picture that we gave the new person who did the samples. You have to know that the first factory is in China and the new person is actually a Lolita fashion designer in France. So, today I'm gonna show you the difference between made in China and made in France. So, these are the two dresses together and this is what we had designed. So, the main problem, and I think that's also a lot of our fault, is that with only that designed on paper, like a drawing, it's really open to interpretation, except for stuff like the lengths, for example, the first skirt that we got, this long and it's not the length that we wrote on the reference sheet. We wanted 70 centimeter long and this one is barely 50 like regular length and we would we wanted the longer length. Plus if you measure the whole uh, length of fabric used to make the skirt it's only 1 meter 50 and usually you go for two and a half, three meter long, like about three times the waist to, to make the, the quantity of fabric to make a Lolita skirt and this one is way too small. At some point we thought that maybe we could open the back and you know add some fabric on the back but we would have to add one meter to make it look normal and so that was not an option. Then there's also the fact that it looks really costumey and especially, okay, this is the blouse and it's missing a sleeve because she, the French girl has to take it apart to look how it was done. Anyways, here all that frilly thing around the collar, not very beautiful. Look how she made it. It's really, it's also a different interpretation than our design, but it's really more elegant, right? And also, if you look at the pin tags, pin tags here, they're just made over, over the fabric with a different fabric, like black, plain fabric, cotton. And here it's real pin tags. Also, she thought it would be more beautiful with the thin layer of extra lace around it and it's super pretty and also buttons I mean a blouse you would need a button right no buttons and here of course it's real buttons that you can open you know because yeah that's the point and so I picked some very pretty buttons with her in the store so then I cannot show you here like that the overskirt because we had to tear it apart. I think the overskirt was the best part in the Chinese version because it was the same dotted tool but they had taken the liberty of using black chiffon to make the ruffles and this was very pretty. Also we had realized that they used a lace fabric that we didn't really like we wanted another lace that was more like 3D and very detailed and very pretty. That was our idea to make a dress all in lace. 
but they couldn't find one and we were in a rush so we, we let them choose another one that was not exactly perfect when we wanted to make our own we wanted to buy it but it was really expensive and I don't think you guys are ready to pay like 40, 50 extra euros just for the fabric. So in that case we really liked the dotted thing and also we really liked the chiffon that I had used. So we decided to pick plain chiffon and dotted chiffon and actually it's plume tea so it's see-through and with small dots like in velvet and it's super pretty and over there it's plain chiffon also yeah the sleeve not see-through that was not what we wanted and look really really costumey and really you know the shape is really ugly so this is way way more elegant also different layers of different length of chiffon very pretty uh, also the back on the back see how they made the shearing like only three elastics and no lacing so that means that if the girl is really thin she cannot make it tighter and it will look weird and so here she made I think like one two three four five different ones uh, elastic lines and also there is some lacing very pretty so and yeah and about the overskirt it was the right length meaning that since the skirt was shorter it was going under the skirt like over after the end of the skirt the overskirt was still showing and that's not really what you want right you want it at least above or maybe uh, until the exact same length not longer anyways so that's our idea of princess layer. We wanted versatile pieces. So here I'm showing you a version of the dress with the overskirt, like the blouse, the skirt and the overskirt. But you could also do just the skirt and the blouse. And so in that case, we put the blouse on top. And here with the overskirt, I put the blouse inside of the skirt. So it's better with the overskirt. Of course, please don't give us your opinion of the Chinese version because we know it's terrible. Unless you find something really that you liked and we didn't put in the new version, so tell us. But then, if you look at the details of that new version, please let us know what you think. If you think we should change some things, for example, I'm not 100% sure that we should use grow grain for the ribbon here so would you prefer satin or is it beautiful or velvet or a different kind let us know also yeah tell us if anything that we have going on you think is not bad maybe here i think it's too much ruffled maybe i will make it less you know like less fabric so it's a bit less ruffled like that you know so a bit smoother that's something that i would change and also there's a mistake here actually the pretty fabric is on the wrong side and here it's less pretty so yeah just a detail but of course on the new version it will be the correct side but our idea of the princess layer would be basic pieces that you can mix up so you can make different coordinates with that dress or you can also coordinate those with other pieces that you have already. So for example, we will also do an OP and a GSK and a different cut saw to go with that and the whole collection will be in black and ivory. So you have many different basic pieces that you can put together to make really great coordinates. And of course we had the absolute pleasure of having Pom from the YouTube channel Pom Mandarin to model in the fashion show at Omni Avenitas with that gorgeous dress and she said she was a bit afraid when she saw the first picture that I showed her and yeah she wasn't happy and then she was super happy that we redid it and that she could wear this one so also please tell us what do you think of 
the dotted fabric plum tea. Do you think we should have gone with the lace fabric that I showed you? Or do you think it's pretty like that? Or maybe we'll make another one with the lace fabric. And of course here it's not see-through. We have put something under that only on the sleeves and not here. I think that's preferable when we want to wear it. Also the skirt, of course, is not see-through either. But the overskirt is. Well, other than a really bad interpretation of a design and maybe also for us a bit of bad fabric choices, other than that the quality was not too bad in that factory, like sewing and everything. On that dress it was okay, I guess. Of course, the French version is a lot better, there's some tiny details, but yeah, you can see the difference between made in China and made in France. Of course, also the price is not the same. So that's why we decided that we will make all of our samples from that girl in France and she will use our fabric and they will go together, pick the fabric and we can talk together better on what we really wanted for that design and she can really ask us questions and everything. The fact that the factories in China tend not to do so much and uh, they don't ask any questions and then they come up with something yeah, and then it's too late because they've shipped it already. So the fact that this girl is in France, she, she, she speaks the same language as me but also English so she can talk also with Meto, the designer and she's also not very far from where I live, about two and a half, three hours. So we can really meet up and talk about it and have the thing in hand. So that's super useful. So she will make all of our new samples and then because she's really too expensive to produce our clothes here because you guys wouldn't be ready to pay that high of a price for an indie brand because the quality is here but we are not that known and everything so probably wouldn't be worth the cost of making it the whole collection in France but that's our next step we hope that if we have very good samples made like we want and that we ship that to the factories in China then they will be able to reproduce it without making as many mistakes as they did based on just our picture so think across that that works and then we will open the reservation so you guys can order yours and I think I don't know if it was with our first collection the reservation was not really popular sweet dream carousel I don't know if it was because it was our first collection we were not very popular yet and everything but we didn't get any orders while we opened the reservation and it was not really actually a reservation it was pre-order and we had a set quantity of fabric and we wanted people to order them at that point so we can order them all together and the fact now is that uh, we didn't get many orders during that time but we had many other uh, people interested later and now it's really difficult to make a new dress especially since we don't know where to make them anymore because we had trouble with the factories so I think maybe we really need to ask the factories if we can just send them one order at a time when they come and that making like the Saobo shops that um, create one collection and then um, create one sample and then the pictures and they said okay you can order yours which whichever size you want and it will take x amount of days between 30 to 60 sometimes i've seen like 80 days like almost three months anyways if you guys are ready i think that might be the best than just saying for like two weeks or four weeks you can order and after that time it's too late we might not even use all the fabric that we had already printed and in that case it's only basic fabric so we'll see how it goes for the reservation but or probably we'll just make them on demand we'll see also let us know which do you prefer um, for 
reservation, pre-orders on demand, you don't want to wait. Anyways, if you already order them when we ask and you, we can order a bunch together, then you'll have to wait less, of course. Anyways, that was my showing you our trouble with the factories and how it's not always easy as a business owner to make everything. Uh, actually, I've met many indie brands in Omnia Vanitas and most of the time the owner is also the designer and also the seamstress. So it's way easier for them because they just sew everything themselves, but then I, I think they can get way less quantities made. I don't know. Since I can't sew and since I really want to make a big brand someday, I really wanted to have a factory that could be able to mass produce my dresses. And so now you're thing that it's not that easy but I can see that most of the time the people in the factories have asked me to send them the sample and before I didn't have one or I didn't have someone locally to make them so it was really easier for them to make based on the picture and actually for this one the samples were really like we designed it so that was hot that was cool but with the princess layer we went to such a big disaster that I think it's safer to go with a French person making the dresses here that we can talk and see everything together and then we ship it. Of course I'll let you guys know how it works out and if it works or not and if I'm in a few months also in a disaster for something else we'll see. Anyways I would like to thank you so much for watching my videos and for the support you guys have given me as a YouTuber and giving Fluffy Tori as an indie brand. We are so happy to see how many people excited by our design and the likes and the so positive comments that you're making on our social media and in person when we get to meet. So thank you so much and just know that we really want to make the best product ever for you guys. So let us know what we could do to make that brand fantastic for you. So thank you so much for watching. If you are not subscribed yet and you like that kind of video, please consider subscribing and don't forget to like it. Thank you. Bye bye.